Cherubs, I'm so excited today to talk to you about steel characterization. Now I know we talked about this in class, but I want to give you a little review so you remember kind of what the letters stand for and how you're going to be able to utilize it when you're looking at a text. So what we talked about first in our characterization lesson was that there are two types of characterization. There is direct and there is indirect. And steel represents all of the different ways we can do what's called indirect characterization. Direct characterization is kind of the boring stuff where I say Kayla has red hair or Miriam is nice. But instead of saying those things, we're looking for ways that we can show who a character is without just saying, just kind of telling them basic, telling basic facts about them. So we use steel. So just as a reminder, steel, S-T-E-A-L, each letter stands for a different way that we characterize someone. So the S in steel stands for speech. The T stands for thoughts. Oh, shucks, I gotta make my font smaller. Um, and then we have E, which is effect on others. Then A, which is actions. And last of all, L, which is looks. And when you look at steel characterization, when I ask you to tell me about a character's speech or a character's thoughts, I want you to be able to provide me with evidence from the text that shows me that you actually have a reason to be saying this. So today we're going to talk about a character from one of the books we've been reading as a class, which is Every Soul a Star by Wendy Mass. And we're going to talk about the character of Brie. So I'm going to write up here Brie because she's kind of a, a notable character. Um, she's important and she also is very, uh, she has a very, like this very certain identity. And so we're gonna talk about some of the things that make her who she is. So remember, speech is about not only um, what somebody says, but also how they say it. So when we think about Brie, I would say that um, from what I remember of, of reading her, she's kind of got like a, a valley girl, kind of um, condescending way of talking where she talks like she's better than other people. So I would say um, maybe condescending, um, maybe a little um, kind of snooty. And as far as the things she says, they're also kind of condescending and snooty. Um, she also definitely talks like a teenager. And we have to think about age, too. Um, so a teenager is going to talk probably differently than an 85-year-old. Um, a 30-year-old is going to talk differently than a 90-year-old. Unless, of course, that 30-year-old is me, because I can totally pull the 90-year-old card. Um, so if we're looking at Brie, we might say, let's see, something like... Um, <laughs> she writes about so Bree is talking and she says two heavyset women next to me start grumbling I'm not drinking my coffee out of a straw the other nods and they get up noisily and bang through the back door like they would have had a chance anyway I think that moment when Bree says like they would have had a chance anyway kind of shows that she thinks she's better than other people um, another example might be when she's talking about her talking to her friend Claire and she says total 10 today or sorry she says uh, she tells her friend Claire she's a 10 in terms of like her style but then they show her thinking really though she's more like an 8 so actually maybe I would put that one down here with thoughts so maybe thoughts Brie has would be that um, she uh, she might think something like I'm more attractive than most other people I definitely think she thinks that a lot. And so if I wanted to show my evidence, I might put in that little bit of text where it says, total 10 today, Claire says, falling in step with us. And then Bree says, I'm wearing, whoop, I can spell, I'm wearing the white tank dress that shows off my tan. So she clearly like thinks a lot about herself. And then we have, thanks, I tell her. You too. Really though, she's more like an eight. So that kind of shows us a little bit of the kind of thoughts that Brie has, the kind of person she is. As far as condescending, snooty teenager dialect, honestly, you could use the same thing down here with the thoughts, but you could put it up here. But let's try and find something different. Um, so let's see, one thing that Brie says that we might use is, hmm, hmm, hmm. a good one about when she worked at Sephora. <laughs> I should have found these before I made a video, but it's okay. So another example about Brie 
Well, let's worry about it later. For now, let's think about effect on others. What is the effect that Brie has on other people? Now, this is probably the, the category of steel that trips people up the most because they get all confused and they're like, makes people happy, makes them laugh, which, yeah, that's an effect on others, but you've got to try and find some specific evidence to back it up. So one example of an effect that Brie has on others that's kind of unexpected is that she, um, she makes people feel comforted, and specifically, she makes her sister feel comforted. And we know that because when her sister has these night terrors, Brie is the one who goes and helps her out. And in the text, she actually talks about that. So on page 23, it says, she's talking about night terrors. They're like nightmares, except she's not dreaming at the time. And it says, um, Melanie's asking her sister Brie, did I have one last night? And Brie says, yeah, around midnight. I found you in the corner of the living room and brought you back to bed. And Melanie says, thanks. And it kind of shows a different side to Brie, I think, when we read that about her. So for the sake of this presentation, I'm going to say, oops, page 23. Brie talks about helping her sister after she, the sister, the sister has a night terror. So we know that she can make her sister feel comforted. As far as effect on other people, how do you think she makes most people feel? I would imagine, just judging by the fact that she clips pictures from models and considers herself part of the A click and other people part of the B click, that she might perhaps make others feel a little bit intimidated. So I'm going to say makes other people feel intimidated or undervalued, maybe. So to prove that, I might put the quote where it says, Let's see. I have lots of plans. There are pictures of models to clip from magazines, from my wish book, boys to follow around in the mall. So weird. And sleepovers with Claire and the rest of the A click. So I think it suggests that she kind of might make other people feel a little bit like not as special or important as she is. And that also could be something that goes up in this part about speech. It's kind of the way she speaks. You can get a sense of it. She uses that teenager, the A-click kind of talk. Now we're down to actions and looks. And as you're probably noticing, some of these things overlap. So the actions might also be speech. Like when she says she's going to follow boys around the mall and clip pictures from magazines, those are actions. So here we could put clips, pictures of models from magazines. She also goes to something, to an information session about modeling. So attends a modeling information session. I think that tells us a little something about her and the kind of character she is. Um, she also, at one point, refuses to get into her parents' ugly minivan. So they eventually make her get in, but she definitely at first is like, um, I'm not getting in there, that's embarrassing. I'll walk to, to Claire's house. So that is another example of an action that shows us the kind of person she is. Um, she also... Uh, tells her sister to stop doing cartwheels in public. That's another thing that kind of shows us something about her via her actions. Last of all, looks. So based on what we're seeing and what we're reading, it sounds like she is tan. It sounds like she is um, very pretty. Now here's the thing, when you write something like very pretty, that's going to be a little different from character to character. So we can't, um, we can't just write like pretty and call it a day because my pretty and your pretty might not be the same. So we can say she's tan, we can say she has long flowing hair. Um, I think she said she has beautiful blue eyes, I'm pretty sure, but not 100%. So let's see, I know she also wears a lot of makeup, right? So we're going to say wears fancy makeup every day. And she also is uh, dresses very carefully and stylishly. So you can kind of hopefully create an image of Brie and what she might look like from, um, from these kinds of descriptions. So, for example, it says something like, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. in the first section where we learn about Brie, she talks about putting on makeup and she says, I finish lining my eyes smudge them a little and turn to her. That's Melanie she turns to. See how my eyes look even bigger now? 
So that's an example of, of something to do with her looks. Um, with the clipping pictures of, mo of magazines and models, you could find any piece of text that shows that she's going to that modeling information session. So, um, for example, you could go to a little further down on the page, it says, my best friend Claire, ah, my best friend Claire and I are going to a free lecture at the community center called Breaking into Modeling. And that's another example. So as you can see, we've got a nice thorough steel chart, and hopefully with these qualities, we know a little bit more about Brie. We know that she's kind of condescending in the way she talks. She's kind of snooty. She has that teenagery voice. Um, she thinks that she's more attractive than other people. She also thinks another thing we could add is that my family is super nerdy and weird. And we have a lot of evidence of that that we could add in here too. Um, for example, she talks about how her mom hasn't worn makeup since her wedding and she brags about it. And then she says, I guess scientists don't need to look good. So she definitely has certain thoughts about her family that are kind of negative. Effect on others, we know she makes her sister feel comforted. We know that she probably makes other people feel intimidated, including maybe even her parents a little bit. As far as actions, we know she's clipping out pictures of models, she's attending a modeling information session, she's telling her sister to stop doing those embarrassing cartwheels in public, and she's refusing to get into her parents' embarrassing minivan. And then last of all, we know she's tan, she's got flowy hair, and she really cares a lot about her appearance, and it shows in the way she dresses and the way she does her face up every day. So. This is one example of how we can use steel to better understand a character. Now for you, I want you to be able to do this uh, with any passage from a book or with any character that you see in your everyday life or on TV. If I, should, if I said to you, I want you to do this and I want you to create a steel chart to characterize Miss Gillen, you should be able to do that too. Uh, this is going to be on your benchmark exam, so make sure you review it and ask me any questions if you don't understand. I think you're going to rock it out and I hope you are excited about characterization because it's pretty awesome. All right, talk to you soon. Bye, students.